The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 923 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the social medias in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we have in studio, it's the guest we've been talking about all week long, highly anticipated, probably the biggest guest of the year, physically or otherwise, Bradley is here. You're just you're you're saying that just to make fun of me because I'm literally there's four people in this room and I'm the sh- <laughs> I am the shortest person in this room. I am five freaking ten, and I'm the shortest person in this entire room. That's okay. You're big in spirit, and I see you jam to uh, Bond Journey. But also with us, checks notes here he is hold on, NWA Exodus Pro Midwest World Heavyweight Champion. Did I get all the words in there? You definitely did. Pretty Boy Smooth <laughs> is with us. Yo, I knew you were going to do that Bradley shit at the beginning. I, was <laughs> I, I saw it coming. I, was, I woke up and came up with that bit. Uh, <laughs> <today>. <laughs> uh, no, thank you so much. Uh, Pretty Boy Smooth coming on down here from Erie. Uh, uh, thank you so much. You've been in the studio before. I don't think this is your first time, right? No, like, no it's not. It was a long time ago. Yes. Years ago. Yeah, years. Pre-COVID, probably another lifetime away. And so much has changed. I think it was when you first had the, we'll, we'll talk about the scholarship and everything. Um, big show this weekend. NWA Exodus Pro is going to be uh, Journey Two. I think it's their their first year anniversary. Uh, it's going to be uh, live on the YouTube and NWA YouTube page. A lot of big stuff going on there. And, and and thank you so much. We'll be talking a lot about that here in the show coming up. It's been a really interesting crew. I think we both had some very interesting experiences over this last year working with that crew up there in Cleveland. Yeah, it's been a, a blessing for me. You know, I, I enjoy being over there. I enjoy learning from EC3 and Aaron Stevens. Mm-hmm. I enjoy that style of formatting of running shows and wrestling. Uh, shout out to Noah. I call him the chef with all these video packages he's been cooking <laughs> oh up lately. God. This is where I got to dig into those recently. It's the first time I've really dug into them. I was like, yeah. okay, this is... All right, we, we could do some fun stuff with this here. Uh, anyways, I want to, uh, but also, if you hear any background noise, the Dutters is in the background as well, hanging out. So, hi, we have a, we have a studio audience of a sort. What's that? Taller than Bradley. Taller than Bradley. Damn yes. it. <laughs> Sorry, Bradley. Sorry. <laughs> anyways. I we, am not pocket Bradley. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, it's been a while. Um, and, the, and we brought all the may- mayhem vibes for you. Um, but uh, uh, Ponder already says, damn, that's a massive and beautiful championship belt. Oh, hell yeah. yeah that looks good in the studio lights. I like that. Yeah, it definitely does, man. That thing is heavy. <laughs> this, this is I've, what a real champion. I've held champ- that, and that is heavy. This is what a real championship supposed to look like. You know there you mean? go. I, I had not picked it up. We we were uh, during the championship, like we were doing like beauty shots of it for for B roll for later yeah. and social media and stuff. But like that's the first time I got to get my hands on that. That's awesome. Big title for a big dude, man. That's right. <laughs> They're just like who can carry this around? This one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll talk about that. But first, I want to get it. Let's get into uh, some of the general stuff going on uh, around the wrestling world. Uh, the biggest news that I've been hearing coming around, this is something, uh, of course, WWE, hey, WWE is not, uh, 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 well, I guess any company is going to tell you all the good stuff they got going on here. Um, but I, I heard this, I saw this one going around social media, and they even mentioned it on Raw last night. Uh, there was something called Fanatics Fest uh, over the weekend, which seemed like just a big, like, lots of signings or something like that up at the Javits Center in New York City. Uh, and, of course, Fanatics is... Um, I guess they do like everything sports at this point, you know, like um, I think it's the reason why they, I know they took over WWE shop a long time ago. And that's the reason why we have like college football championship belts now and, and NBA or, or oh, NBA yeah. and like, you know, all of that. I mean, they used to be custom belts before, but now they just have them for all the teams, except for the Jacksonville Jaguars. For some reason, I understand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but anyways, it's $300 for free advertising. I know. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, um, uh, the, the biggest line coming from uh, social media over the weekend was that 
uh, the the Fanatics Fest, you know, they had like all kinds of sports stars uh, from all over, and they had like a whole list. I mean, they've been they've been telling this for like like a month and a half on WWE television. And uh, according to this, that the only stars and athletes, this is according to, I think you, this is actually Fox news for this one. Uh, the only stars and athletes that sold out their autograph and photo ops at the fanatics events were the WWE stars. I actually did read that. That's you know? crazy. Yeah. Wrestling is booming right now. I love People that. are starting to give us the respect we deserve. I love it. It has been interesting. And, and this is, this is everybody uh, across the board, not just WWE, but you do see that like, you know, I think internationally and, and like you see more like WWE wrestlers, TNA or yeah, not TNA, uh, AEW, you know, everybody is uh, the NWA guys, you know, popping up on new shows um and everything like that like like wrestling is i always when i see that think about like how like wrestlemania was like all the stars and muhammad ali and everything was there and and like that that mainstream thing that vince always kind of was pushing for was as part of it and it's like yeah it really like wrestlers become like bigger than the sports stars at this point like the the, the traditional sports stars let's say right yeah well i mean when you look at wwe a lot of people in the front row you, you see some athletes mm -hmm. lebron james or even a rapper like West Side Gun, you know, like a lot of people still are fans and love wrestling, so they show up. Yep, yep. Um, a, a Tina's, I think, chiming in that Fanatics is a major place for licensed merchandise for sports as well. I, yeah, I think they handle a lot of it across the board. They become a pretty big thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, well, it, it is kind of the best of both worlds because it's larger in life. You know, these these giant carriages. It's kind of like it's kind of like meeting your favorite sports star, but they are also like Tom Cruise. You know, right? I mean, it, it is like that entertainment yeah. sports thing, and it just kind of captures more people's imaginations. The, the wrestlers uh, have personalities already. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's been many uh, football stars didn't have much personality. Mm -hmm. so, That's true. But, but you need one in wrestling to be successful. So it is. It is wild to talk to a football player that you're used to seeing just smashing people on the gridiron, and they're like the most low key person to talk to. Uh huh. Like it, it's. It is kind of like. Uh, not jarring, but it's just surprising a little bit sometimes. So, um, but yeah, no, they definitely. So that was kind of a big, the big news from wrestling there. And I love this one. This is th this is one that I I kind of personally kind of dug. There was uh, this is according to, and again, take this all with a grain of salt because this is kind of a dirt sheet story. Uh, PW Insider was reporting that there were uh, many times where Triple H is scrolling through Twitter. Uh, from WWE's gorilla position uh, during the broadcast, paying very close attention to what people, the audience is saying about this. I heard that when that uh, walk culture was saying that. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's been going around and, you know, um, I, there was a picture uh, I follow. Are you guys aware of Gary Vaynerchuk? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read his books and I actually watched some of his motivational it's stuff. Same here. Big motivator for me for yeah. a lot of stuff I've done over the years, right? Yeah. Um, but there was a picture of Triple H on the jet with his new book. Oh, yeah. which I've read by the way. Um, and, uh, and the name of it escapes me, but, uh, yeah, it, 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 you know, it's about like, like, um, his big thing is attention, right? How you get people's attention. And when you hear triple H talk about this, he talked like, we've heard like WWE people over the years saying, you know, our, you know, AEW is in our competition. Phones are a competition. You know what I mean? Like anything that takes attention away is your competition. You know, yeah. this podcast in a small, small part, <laughs> is competition for WWE, yeah. you know, or at least NXT because they're on right now in their last half hour, and the chat room is going to keep us updated on if anything going on uh, interesting over there, especially since we have some uh, uh, Pittsburgh friends that are a part of that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, it, it kind of makes sense though, right? Like, um, I know when I do live shows, wrestling shows, independent shows, I notice who has Twitter following and who doesn't. Yeah, because there's two things that happen. One, I'm following a Twitter account for a lot to make sure I'm not screwing up the live feed because <laughs> that's yeah. really important, right? Um, and uh, and also it's just like you know, are people doing things? Are people doing the clips? You know, there are shows that I thought were big shows have crazy stars on them, and I see zero social media. Like they're putting stuff out, but nobody's reciprocating. And then we do something like you know, you've been to 880. We'll talk about that later. You know, it's I mean, it's it's a training school, right? And yeah. there's people tweeting about it every week and pictures of their cats watching TV. I mean, I think it's tough, though, because mm -hmm. at a lot of indie shows I've gone to, it's only a small percentage of the fans there that are on social media. Like sure. On, like X or whatever the case may be. Like, 
those kids and like those moms at those shows that are like the casual fans, they're not freaking looking at any of that. So it's like you got to find a way to engage both like the live audience and like that social media digital footprint kind of vibe. So. Kind of kind of thing of like who's your audience, who who you're making the show for, you know? Yeah. And do you, you know, I, I we I think I talked about here a lot is like, are you making the show just for the fans and you know, buying the tickets? Are you trying to expand? And is there you? Yeah. considering the live audience or you considering the social media audience that's going to tell people about it and bring more people in, you know, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of that idea. And WWE of course is doing this at scale and yeah. continue to break YouTube watch records <laughs> or something for <laughs> clips. Whenever Roman reigns or the rock sneezes at this point, uh, it <laughs> seems like, right. It's just like, Hey, Hey, there's something happened on SmackDown. Hey, yeah, we're the top thing on YouTube, or, you know, this weekend, which is a giant, giant freaking <laughs> number. Right. So, I mean, look at a, a, a Mr. Beast has a giant complex where he's trying to make like the biggest videos ever to be number one, you know, have a giant following on YouTube. And then WWE is just like, yeah, we did this, you know, which is like star power, of course, is, is the difference there, I guess. Um, when it comes to the indie promoters, I'm, I'm a little more impressed of the ones that actually reach out to the fans and start mm -hmm. asking questions. Yes. And, you know, trying to get to know, you know, what is it you like? What is it you don't like? They might cheer for something. You might think you know what they're cheering for or what they're booing. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a little, I think it's a little easier for them to find out when they have a conversation mm -hmm. with those fans. And, you know, are you booing because you don't like that? No, we're booing because this over here was happening in the corner and it had nothing to do with this guy. I don't even know, this, you know, well, whatever type of thing. Well, that's true because, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I you know, Different levels of promotions, you know, some some, pro some promoters watch the footage back and kind of look at all those reactions. Again, some are just kind of listening to the reaction from backstage. You know, I've been back there and hear like somebody go out and be like, well, that guy's not getting the belt, you know, or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. you, I've heard those kinds of reactions from from people running shows. But, you know, yeah, it is deeper. It's like, it's like, okay, but why? You know, if you're talking to somebody like, you know, a fan say, okay, why is this guy not hidden? And, you the, know? and those promoters are so busy, you know, sometimes they're they're not focused on the match. They're trying to take care of something in the back. That's true, too. That's true, too. So that area there. It is attention. I mean, it's attention both ways, right? You know, mm -hmm. so, um, and, and, and then some people just, I've also, you've also seen promotions that seem to book, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, people, if you've seen this around, it just seems like they just, book the stuff they want to see and then you know it's, it's their money so is there money <laughs> yeah yeah i really don't have a dog in that fight you know? yeah exactly so i mean it, you know and, and that's i mean it, you kind of see that uh, that also kind of matches which which promotions are kind of on the rise and which ones kind of stagnate right to a certain extent so and, and which ones cancel at the last minute <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know what we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh okay no, I, I still don't know who we're talking about, but I can think of like five examples in my head over the last ten years. Um, yeah, don't put me in some shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get. Hey, we're here for ten minutes in, and we're gonna get you in trouble already. So, right? So, um, anyway, so that's the biggest thing happening there, and of course, WWE's leading into Berlin. Well, they got a double double uh, thing. What Berlin and uh, No Mercy NXT No Mercy's uh, Labor Day weekend? Is it? I believe so. And I w think when's Berlin? Uh, that is, I believe, what did I think is the thirtieth, thirty first, something like that. Um, oh, geez. No mercy. No, that's a movie named New Mercy, and it looks kind of sexy from nineteen eighty six. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> so, um, NXT No Mercy twenty twenty four. This is why I need a research department here. Um, uh, are you looking at pictures of Zeke Mercer? Is that what's going no, on? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm on a new search engine. So, oh, all right, all right, all right. so no, it does not know that I know Zeke Mercer yet on here. So I'm trying to figure that out. Thank you. August 31st for Bash in Berlin. And I think No Mercy is the same weekend. So yeah, that so that would be the first that they're doing that. So, um, so that's two PLEs in one weekend. Two PLEs in one weekend. But oh, they gosh. Back, what they do back to back NXTs in the same city. I don't think No Mercy is in Berlin is the difference. So it's one day after the other? Yes. So it's like a very quick plane ride overseas to come back? or what, where, where are these? Denver, places? Colorado. Uh -huh. uh, and it's a different roster. So. Oh. NXT. Oh, it's an NXT and a WWE. Oh, yes. okay, okay. So that's well, Colorado. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's typical. 
what a what an interesting back to back there. Wait, when's Bad Blood? Isn't that early September as well? That is. I thought I saw that. Was oh, that's October, October fifth. That's I right. I saw it was if that doesn't October. have a hell in a cell, I don't know what we're doing uh, <laughs> at this point. But anyways, um, let's talk. We'll talk more here in a moment about what's going on with uh, Pretty Boy Smooth in Cleveland. But in the meantime, want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, you guys get a lot of perks. We get a live stream special, and, and we got extra stuff. Uh, uh, today, if you tune in on the live stream while we're waiting to get the show started, uh, uh, Katie was still hanging out from Awesome Cast and was reading the sexy um, um, games that are on Netflix right now. <laughs> so, and then actually, did you download one of them? Was that a Netflix one or another one? What, is that what, what you're doing over there? What, what game is that? Is that what you're still, you're still following up on that game? Too Hot to Handle 2. You just skipped the first one? It's a TV show? No, this is an app. This is a game. It's a Netflix game. She, 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 what are you doing? There's sexy sexy games, I guess, on apps and things. They can make a character and get what sexy... I, I heard get, get sexy with other... So I had the headphones on. I, I heard right. get sexy with mothers, and that's... All right, we we need to turn AI off for a minute. It's, it's, it's going too far. <laughs> oh, we should show you what we made with AI uh, <laughs> too, because we were playing with Grok AI on Twitter, and uh, they, there's no guide rails on that one. And then it mansplained why uh, uh, Godzilla couldn't wear a speedo to me when I try to make an image. So we were, yeah, we were going, we were How did going we some get here? Like, It's just that, that's welcome to 2024. Uh, right. Anyways, thank you, the Patreon people that can hear that on the Patreon only feed at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And you get to see the background if you're on that feed of uh, when we have graphics, when we go to the commercial break, and, and uh, you can be with us live for the Patreon recording afterwards. Uh, but thank you to everybody that does support the show over there, including Bo Diggity! Woo! Oh, wow, that, that peaked. That that, that was rough. Close. That was rough. Oh, that was see. a little close. I, I thought I was doing it. That's all right. That, that's all right. You just just let it out in the air. Team oh, Hammerfist yeah. okay. down in Florida. The Tupac family. Megan Nelson. Bubba Brewer. APWF coming up here in Johnstown next week. Uh, if you're in the Central PA. Um, and Jason French at the Poppy Club level. Dave Profod Bonner. Spouse of the Drew Affair at DrewStrulliaFair.com. And Rats in a Trench Coat. Tony Kincaid at the pizza level, the Riz, and at the manager level, Bradley. There he is. And I'm wearing the scarf that Megan Nelson bought for me. There you go. It all comes together. It all See. comes together. Uh, and Tina Keys out there in Seattle, the mother of dragons herself, uh, joining the show and in the chat room as well. So, uh, so <laughs> this weekend, Journey to Pretty Boy Smooth, you have a nice big shiny belt over there with a long name I'm not going to repeat again. We're just going to call it the Midwest Championship for the moment. NWA Midwest. NWA Champions. Midwest Champion for for a short uh, and all the rest of the words if you're nasty. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but anyways, so like I said, um, I, I kind of came in and started uh, uh, helping out a bit with the uh, Exodus Pro on the production side uh, uh, about a year ago. And, and you were already talking about how kind of uh, uh, dare I say organized it is, yeah. <laughs> but like I've never run a, I've never been on a show like this that wasn't like, yeah, t- t- impact or something <laughs> like that. Well, yeah. well, that's just the thing. Like EC three is trying to prepare us for television, mm-hmm. you know, and like he wants to run it like it's television. I love so, that. So it's like we're all with, like when I told him when I joined Exodus, like my goal is to get an NWA contract. Mm-hmm. So like everything I'm learning there, everything I'm seeing there, it's kind of setting me up. For to be successful in that regard. So I really appreciate it. You know, you know, a lot of indie shows are very disorganized and different things going on that just mm-hmm. aren't in the best interest of everyone. So it's very nice to see it all cohesively ran. Yeah, this is the uh, this was the first company that um, you know got to got the uh, 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 NWA territory expansion here about a year ago. I think there's, there's several uh, since. Um, you were actually part of an interesting show. I'd love to hear a little bit about, um, you were part of the back to the territory show down. I think that was in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. And that looked like it looked like they were, uh, uh, leaning into the high school gym vibe or something yeah. like that. <laughs> it, it looked like, and I know this is a very intentional thing probably on their part. Cause I, yeah. was it, was it a power taping of some sort? Yeah, it was NWA power taping. It's just a series is called back to the territories. Cause mm-hmm. it's, it's highlighting all the territory promotions, sprinkling some NWA guys. 
I also want to note that we all stayed in Hero's hideout, which was really nice. Uh, the cabin where they shot the Avengers. So uh, I got the Iron Man suite, you know, he's top guy territory. Man. Nice. Actually, Exodus takes nice. care of us, you know. It's, nice. It's awesome. We don't tell you how we won't tell you how Endgame ended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does that mean you're going to turn around and become Doctor Doom? Nah, <laughs> not at all. Don't don't have the Doctor Doom phase of your of your uh, career here. Um, anyways, no, yeah. So it, it's it's been. I know you've been everywhere with this championship. Um, this is the first championship with NWA Exodus Pro uh, yes. that they that they put up. Um, and uh, and you, I remember you got it. And I remember the first announcement I saw was you were bringing it to 880 Wrestling <laughs> against Gannon Jones Jr. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. So I mean, here's the thing: like anyone that knows the lineage of NWA and what mm-hmm. they did, like they always traveled. Yeah. You know. So even though it's the Midwest Championship, I feel like it deserves to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's sanctioned by the National Wrestling Alliance. Like, I don't view this as just an indie promotion championship. Like, I defended it on power. Like, it it holds some prestige and value to it. So, it's my task as the first champion to build that up. So, I've tried to take it everywhere from 880 against Gannon to uh, just recently in Canada against two of the biggest horses they had out there, you know, and, um, Still here. <laughs> I love Still it. Building it up. You know what I mean? You've always had a good history of this. I, I, I've seen you with other championships and just traveling around with it. Um, yeah. You know, like, 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 tell me, like, you don't see a lot of promotions do that these days, right? Um, you know, no. what, you know, what's, what's kind of the, the move to like, you know, bring obviously NWA championship. That's a, that's a big thing, you know, and, and taking that around is, is, you know, I think you said something interesting when you're like, I have, I have the, what you said, full blessing. Uh, you help me with the wording to take this anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, because I mean, what happens is when you win a championship, there's either two things that happen: it's a title that makes a man, or a man that makes a title. Mm-hmm. As the guy that is making this title, it's my job to set the standard for whoever else comes after me, and then also the fact that I want people to think of me when they think of the NWA Midwest Championship. So, yeah, I just try to take it everywhere I can go. And, I mean, Rise was a great catalyst for me. When I was the Rise Grand Champion, I got the opportunity to fly to Vegas and wrestle a JTG for it. So, I mean, I have a little history and experience with, like, making titles and helping promotions grow. And I'm just now doing that on a larger scale. So mm-hmm. it's the same thing to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm watching you with the Exodus title. And, like you, like you said, it's either the champion makes the belt, the belt makes the champion. I would almost say both is happening over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got the NWA, NWA blessing for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just decided to show them the Urban Playboy, the Purple Rain, you know, mm-hmm. the photo shoots and the podcast. I'll actually be doing the Comic-Con area this year, September 20th to 22nd. I'll be there as a celebrity guest, you know what I mean? So just making it happen. Are, are you, uh, here's a side note here. Are you making a run for uh, John McChesney's, uh, 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 we always call him the mayor of Erie? <laughs> nah, that, nah that's, that's all him, man. I got, I got completely different goals. How about Lieutenant Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out John McChesney. I wouldn't be a wrestler without him. Absolutely. I, I, I told you that story, right? Uh, I'm sure you have. I don't know if it was on this show. All right, so. And we, I think we have a lot of new eyeballs here tonight. <laughs> All right, so I was in grad school, and I was kind of like going through like a little depression phase or whatever because I had stopped playing basketball and whatnot. And a girl that I worked with was telling me she was best friends with a girl that was dating a wrestler that was like local. And mind you, I didn't know about indie wrestling at this Mm -hmm. time. So I ended up going to a PWR show, and it's it's John McChesney. He's wrestling Matt Hardy. (laughs) So it just threw me (laughs) for And you knew who Matt Hardy was at least, right? absolutely. And then, like, the next show, he's wrestling EC3. So, like, it's it's crazy. Like, I just keep going. And then one night I get drunk and I'm like, hey, like, what do you think about me, like, practicing to try to be a ref? And he just looked at me like I was stupid. <laughs> and he's just like, nah, you, he's like, nah you're too big. You just got to try out. And we just kind of went from there. And here I am. Like somebody holding somebody on the ropes like, one, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely wasn't jacking it. It wasn't happening. I love, I, 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 you know, I don't know that we've dived too much into, because I remember you telling a story before and I can't remember if it was on the show. Oh, it's worth retelling. But like, were you just like, I don't know if I can be a wrestler. I think I can pull off a ref. Did you, or was well, it well, just kind of learning it or? This is what really happened. 
I I was go, I used to go to the shows by myself sometimes. Yeah. And then my college roommate, like his girlfriend, wanted to come one time just to see what it was because mm -hmm. she knew. Like I used to have like these pay per view parties at like my apartment. And right. So we're at the show, and she's like, "You look better, and you're more athletic than like these guys we're watching. Like, why don't you try and do this?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, "I don't know. I'm 23," and she's like looking at me like all confused. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you're only 23. I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, I didn't go to school for this or whatever. She's just like. And then, like every mm -hmm. time I was about to leave, somebody from somebody from the staff would look at me and ask me, like when I was debuting, as if I was like security or something, because I would always get like front row tickets. Like I yeah, was yeah. just hella markish. And then it just got to a point. And you kind of stuck out in front row. Yeah, and yeah. then like I would hang out with John at after parties because mm -hmm. of like the the friendships and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So one night, you know, you can thank a bottle of Parrot Bay for me being here. <laughs> <laughs> hey. As all good decisions are made, right? Yeah. Uh, so um, you were paired with uh, somebody that we have enjoyed. I just saw him this weekend at Neo Pro, uh, and, and, and it's always fun. Uh, Pastor Silo. Yeah. Which just oh, when I boy. saw that you guys were coming together, I, I was like, this is perfect. Exactly. I don't know why, but this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really funny how that came about. I mean, I knew of Pastor CeeLo, but mm -hmm. like I couldn't put like a face to the name. And, and also, like, for those that don't know, like we know him. He's been in a lot of promotions that we filmed with over the, the past year or so. Uh High energy is is an understatement. I yeah. think uh, comes out with an offer plate. I can't believe how much real money was going into that offer plate. He's got oh. an offer plate on a stick now. Oh, <laughs> he'd he be moving. We, uh, I know, we have a bit where uh, whenever he's at eight eighty, um, we start putting like my my videographer will start putting like his car keys in there, a phone in there. He put a Nintendo Switch in there one time. <laughs> like it's a whole like like fun thing that we get to do. But like, but it's it and it's it's. But the crowd is not into the show yet. Yeah. He's going to get it going. Yeah, well, I was doing a seminar with Sammy Callahan mm -hmm. uh, fairly recently. And when he had us doing, like, drills and whatnot, like, I think that's the first time I really saw CeeLo in person. And, like, you knew, like, all right, this is somebody. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like the mm -hmm. charisma is always there. The energy is always there. The passion is there. And he's just a fun guy to be around. And we've been making noise and making things happen. You know what I mean? Um, he has, um, I won't, I don't know if I'll call it a feud with, uh, um, our, our friend from State Farm and there's a big check involved, several, I think maybe at this point. I mean, I, I wouldn't it's call just... it a feud. I would just call it a, a donation. You know, he okay. Was, he was just All giving right. us money. Like he was okay. kind of stupid for betting against me in a match. Okay. You know what I mean? So that's, that's on him. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, two things I love that there's a, a, a giant novelty check. And and Pastor Silo makes it all perfect. Uh, so it, it, it's it, it's been an interesting ride and see you guys together. Um, so I let's talk about something from a, we had Megan in here a, a few a couple months ago talking about uh, she was uh, feeding you grapes at one show. Uh, <laughs> there was this whole thing. Uh, Exodus, I love this this concept that Exodus does. There's always some kind of shenanigans in the corner you know like it, it feels like it feels like how there's like the funeral par parlor info it, it, you know uh, interview segment over in the corner at superstars and you're like was that thing there the whole time you know kind of deal so like there's you know uh uh tiffany uh what's her name T tiffany, tiffany nieves, nieves uh, uh had a, like it was a puerto rican parade kind of concept and she had this yeah. big chair and everything and it was, it was treated like the princess uh, uh, the slime balls had pee pee punch or something in the corner, and it was oh, yeah. kind of interesting. You had like this big Greek, uh, yeah, so thing so, in the corner. <laughs> I think I think you were the first ones that did that nah, too. We, we were. I mean, we had the money to blow, so why not? And here's the thing that I feel is missing on like a lot of indie promotions. There's a lot of events that run just matches, mm -hmm. and if you watch professional wrestling it's more than just matches mm -hmm. you know like there's other ways to present people as a star and to make you care about them and to get people invested and you know i'm in a position now where i have the freedom to truly be myself and stretch my wings and see what the extent of that is like me and CeeLo do that together and like that was just one of those things where you know i'm the urban playboy i'm the top dog here i'm the, the head emperor whatever you want to call it and we going to just show y'all that, you know? Yeah, the Megan and Kaylee, and I forget who the third woman was with that. 
don't put me on the spot. Oh, yes, yes, Amanda. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amanda's beautiful. That's one of the homies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was frustrated only because I wanted to be there, but I wanted to like recite poetry, but it would be all like WWE entrance music lyrics. <laughs> See, I, the last thing I was thinking about was wrestling, my man. You couldn't have, you, you would have ruined the vibe. You didn't even oh, know there okay. were matches going on at that point, right? Fair enough, fair I enough. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a lot of distractions in the corner there, Bradley. So, yeah, I was just okay. living my life. Man. I mean, I got to keep the <clears throat> videographers in control, and then it's just this is happening in the corner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so uh, uh, really, uh, so again, the big announcement came in, uh, came out. I want to say just over a week ago. Uh, this is the first event. You know, Exodus has not been. I think other than the, the first show, might have streamed somewhere before we came in. Uh, but Exodus has not been streaming their shows. You've been seeing clips online and everything. We've been we, we've been shooting these shows. Uh, um, you know, my, my, a lot of my team has been coming up and helping me with these, and it's been a really uh, a really fun experience experience on our side. Um, but they reached an agreement that it's going to be streaming on NWA's YouTube page, um, YouTube account page. Whatever you want. It's going to be on your phone. It's going to be on your TV. Either way, you're going to be able to see this thing. Uh, so it's going to be their debut as far as that goes. Uh, uh, you know. Obviously, you've been a lot of places with the belt, um, you know, uh, TV tapings all and the like and everything. You know, what does it mean when you saw that announcement come down? Um, it was awesome. You know, like it words can't describe how excited I was. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the YouTube channel, it has about a quarter million subscribers. Yep. So, I mean, it's an opportunity to get a lot of new eyes on you, a lot of in depth, regular NWA power fans to watch the product, you know what I mean? So, and as the first territory, like it's big for us. Mm -hmm. It solidifies us as the top territory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we have a roster jam packed of stars, you know? I mean, I'm obviously the guy, but we have a lot of guys, you know what I mean? So, and girls and like, we just have a, a dope roster and I'm excited for everyone to see it and see that we bring something different to the table. Um, big show, of course, headlined by EC3 and, um, and holiday for the, uh, NWA championship, uh, world heavyweight championship. I'll get that right. Yeah. <laughs> of course, um, you are defending, uh, that championship against, I'm trying to bring up the name here. Oh, that uh, Chia Pet? The Chia Pet? Is that what you call him? <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's always Tiger Guy to me uh, when, we, when he comes up. And uh, I'll get the match graphics here in a moment. Uh, there you go. Uh, Dante Casanova. Yeah. So, in all seriousness, Dante is an undervalued, underappreciated talent. You know, like, he's a, a best-kept secret. He's one of those guys where, as soon as... You know, as soon as he stepped through the entrance and hit our cameras, like, you know, what time it's it just is. like, OK, like yeah. we're here we go. You know, like he's got the presence right out the gate. I don't know how far in he is in his career or anything like that. I believe but. he's I believe he's only been wrestling three years. You know, I know he's in the, like the Florida scene, mm -hmm. but the dude is like a star. Like he he's unbelievable, honestly. Like I. I actually told him that the first time I saw him. You know what I mean? Like I, I really rock with what he's doing. Now, I think it would be best, better served for him to keep honing his craft and mm -hmm. you know doing what he got to do as opposed to going for this because this is a different kind of kind of weight. You know what it's I mean? gonna be but, it's gonna be a little bit of a hiccup road bump for him this weekend. You're saying? Yeah, yeah but yeah, you, yeah, I mean, yeah. you learn and grow, and like I feel like I'd be doing he's shooting him a, a shot. He's shooting a shot. I'm doing him a favor. You yep. know what I mean? Like you got to keep him humble. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, it's one of those young kids that like starts getting going like, oh, I could do anything. I could do any. Oh, I could take that title. And then you like, like I, I wouldn't yeah, even, no. And he's had a good run at Exodus, I mean, too. I wouldn't yeah. even call him one of those because because no. in all honesty, if I hadn't won this championship, he might have. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the match was supposed to be him versus Cal. And unfortunately, he had, a, had an injury he had to deal with. He had to step out. And, you know, I just took advantage of the opportunity because I just I'm used to doing that. And uh, things have blown up for me. You know what I mean? Like I said, um, mm -hmm. when I first won the title, it's what, 50,000 views on the internet, just making moves and whatnot. So, you know, I'm kind of showing him what he needs to do once, you know, you're kind if of I ever feel like giving this up. You you're know? setting an example. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? um, I, I, have to, I have to mention, because this is somebody I know we know in the area, know on the show, uh, the former Mambo Italiano uh, is, is uh, going to have another gauntlet. 
I understand. Uh, I don't think the last one. The last one, I thought it was like a 10,000-man gauntlet, and he got about five people in. Uh, but, um, Cristiano Argento. Cristiano Argento, Cristiano. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and it is, it, it's been an interesting shift for him. Uh, and, but it's, it's been a lot of fun, uh, to see, see that, I mean, that's somebody you've seen over the years here in the Pittsburgh area as well. Oh, definitely. I mean, he, and he's been putting in the work, like you can look at his body, he's starting to look more like a Greek God, you know, I had to whip his ass too, but all, all support to him and love to him. You know what I mean? Awesome. Uh, again, all this is going to be on YouTube, uh, NWA's YouTube page this Saturday. If you want to find out what all the buzz from NWA Exodus Pro is about, uh, it's been, uh, again, it's been an incredible journey there. Uh, we're going to continue to talk with you here in a moment. And at the break, uh, at the commercial break, you're actually going to be, uh, if you're with us on the video version, we're actually going to show you a little bit of a, uh, 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 an update of, I guess, you know, what's going on with uh, Pretty Boy Smooth and Pastor CeeLo going into this next show, right? Uh, so stay tuned to that if you're on the video version of this. Or go over to the, um, I believe it's over on their Facebook page, YouTube page probably as well. Um, so I know I'll definitely be on the pre-show because I just made that today. Uh, so um, in the meantime, I'll take one moment to go check out more wrestling. Now, Exodus Pro, they're a, a great partner we get to work with. But of course, uh, we do have a lot more going on over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, we are recording this weekend. Uh, our good friends, uh, APWF, we uh, actually put out their show, which also featured the NWA World Heavyweight Champion EC3. He's everywhere, it seems. <laughs> I swear I filmed. Hardest working champion, how many, man. How did I go from zero to doing like five NWA Heavyweight Championship matches in one year, right, on, on video side? Uh, <laughs> the champ gets around, and... Um, it seems to be always always in front of my camera, uh, but no. APWF's evolution from uh, uh, in June uh, premiered here on uh, our YouTube channel and free on Indie Wrestling Network. So you want to go check that out. That's a really fun show. Um, a lot of re really good talent on that. Uh, so including Bill Collier against EC3 for the heavyweight championship uh, for the NWA. Uh, there will be a, there will be a film in if you're in the Central PA, of course, in Johnstown <laughs> with uh, APWF. <laughs> And, um, and of course, uh, that'll be on the uh, network as well. Uh, this Friday, Thursday and Friday, let's say, is 880 Wrestling. If you're around the New Kensington area, both will be streamed free on our YouTube page for IndieWrestling.us. And actually, everywhere else, I'm working on Twitter right now. It didn't work today, but we're going to get back to it. Uh, <laughs> and everything else. Um, but uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. So go check out all of it, IndieWrestling.us. Um, we also have just dropped the most recent Neo Pro show Midsummer. Uh, and, of course, the next show from this past weekend, uh, Gold Rush Royale, will be coming up on the network as well. Uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, some classic Rise Wrestling with Pretty Boy Smooth. You can see, uh, uh, actually, we got a bit of your stuff from the Pittsburgh area on there, actually. So yeah. go to IndieWrestling.us and just type in Pretty Boy Smooth. And see what comes up on the YouTube page, on the website, wherever. We he was gotta... with me in the sandbox. What's that? <laughs> he was with me in the sandbox. <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, I mean, yeah, catch up. I mean, we we got the, we got a lot of great history of a lot of great people, a lot of great current champs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's what I, that's what I love about that. And uh, you know, we get to dig that up sometimes when it's like, hey, and this is where they came from, right? And you get to see. Uh, um, more of the story, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's one of the cool things that we get to do, uh, partnering with all these promotions and seeing so many people come through either on the studio, in the promotions, and, and seeing you guys. Seeing you grow. Baby, I've seen you grow up. Yeah, you see me, <laughs> you see me beat Warlow. I, re you see I me remember, beat Lee. I remember <laughs> baby PB. Yeah. Always taller than us, anyways. <laughs> yeah, 60 pounds lighter wearing a Gucci belt. And my hair was shorter. <laughs> yes, yes. The clothes has gotten better, and it was already yeah. better dressed than me when you started. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, look at me. I'm just like, oh, good. It's cool. I can wear long sleeves. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I want to update on you, because last time we were on, I think you were just doing, um, you were just starting the scholarship program. Yeah. Which is tremendous. Uh, every time I see on my feed, I'm, I'm sharing it out there. It's a great cause. Uh, uh, for those new to this, you know, you, you got this bigger platform uh, uh, with everything, with the championship and everything, uh, uh, you know, uh, tell, for people that don't know, tell us about the scholarship and, and kind of how it's been going. Okay. So the PB provides scholarship is a scholarship that, um, excuse me, it's really late. So I'm trying to articulate myself. Properly. And you dealt with Pittsburgh traffic. So, <laughs> yeah. So pretty much it's a financial award of one time mm -hmm. of a thousand dollars that either goes, it goes to a student that's either going to Mercyhurst university or, like they recruited there. And this is your alma mater, of course, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I graduated from Mercyhurst twice, actually, undergrad mm -hmm. and grad. 
and the student's going into the communication department. And it's a black student. So the reason I'm doing this is because I feel effective communication is lacking in today's world, whether it be journalism, reading, writing, interviewing, just plain research, you know, with the rise of like misinformation and whatnot. And I feel like we need more people to appreciate, you know, communication. Like I feel like it's a very undervalued uh, major. And I also want to help diversify my school. So it's for, like I said, a black student that's looking to get a degree in communication. So um, we've given it to four different students so far. Um, if you can find my link tree or any of my social media platforms, there's a way to get to it. And whenever you donate, the money goes right to the school. So I don't touch it. <laughs> and where's your link tree at? Uh, it's in my Instagram bio, on my X bio. Uh, just type in pretty boy smooth. Prettyboysmove.com. Katie Dutters runs all that. So uh, that that's the, the person behind the mask of PB Enterprises. Because <laughs> I am technologically illiterate sometimes <laughs> everybody needs a little bit of help sometimes right yeah. i mean that's, that's a good business person is you 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 fill in somebody that uh, you know what you don't know you get somebody to, to do it for you yeah you right? gotta yeah. be resourceful yeah. it's yeah. the only way because <laughs> yeah. not everybody can do everything by themselves so not at all. um yeah so and, and i think i think that's a big i think it's a tip for new wrestlers is like you know hey how do i do this stuff is like the link tree is kind of a, it's a free to start kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And it's a nice place for you to like put everything. That's because like, I know, you know, you have like your, your scholarship, your bio, like if you have your acting reel on this too. Oh, every, yeah. Well, here's the thing. We have a website and we have a link tree. Oh really? So, yeah. Like we have so much going on. That I'm trying to, Go through and reorganize and try to figure out. So we're gonna sit down and get through all That's that. That's so you know so smart though because it's like I feel like I you know when I'm putting myself out there like I, I I'll fill out something for 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 a gig and be like okay where do I show them stuff that I've done and I have like three of these you know yeah. like I'm not even that organized <laughs> you know? yeah I mean what helped me like honestly going to school and like learning about marketing and whatnot yeah you yeah. know so. I knew I had to get it done. I may not know how to do it, but mm -hmm. I know it needs to be done. So that's a, a I whenever I hear a wrestler has like a communication degree or something, yeah. that's usually like they're doing the best as far as marketing themselves, typically, yeah. or or a business degree or something like that, right? Well, some of the same rules apply. Mm -hmm. Just forget that. You're all, you're all you're all your own business. Yeah, you know, you're you're all a a independent professional, <laughs> you know, and you don't have a manager. You know, I don't know if CeeLo is doing any of the uh, 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 bookings for you or anything in his position, but, yeah, you know, no, but I, I, you know, other than that, you know, but not everybody has a Jimmy Hart, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it helps to know how to write cover letters and how to do mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. The only thing I wish I did was take more graphic design classes. Mm -hmm. That would have helped me. But, you know, other than that, we make it work. Everybody sign up for Canva. Every yeah. wrestler, every promotion have a Canva account. I'm just going to leave it at that and you can explore why. Um, but, but really, it... it there's also a lot more tools here yeah. <laughs> these days than, than we did like even 10 years ago. Right. So yeah. And if you get the newest iPhone, you really don't even need a camera because it's so cinematic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I believe you'd be amazed what I'm doing with clients with my iPhone. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of great stuff going on there. Um, mentioned acting. Did, weren't you in a movie recently that came out? I was in three different movies. Okay. The last one was Carousel 3. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> pretty much the whole premise of, of these films. Shout out Steve Rosinski. He's actually um, a director that lives right here in Pittsburgh. It's about a serial killer that's a carousel unicorn. Wait, what? <laughs> tell, tell me more. Are you uh, the unicorn? I'm not the unicorn. Okay, okay. We had to no. clarify that right off the bat. <laughs> no, but I, I do play someone that is the child of the person that was killed by this unicorn. So mm -hmm. kind of on my revenge bag. Okay, okay. But uh, you find out in the second film, like, why it's like a carousel unicorn, because like a soul got... So there's out. character like, development. Oh, there's yeah. there's <laughs> deep character development. Okay. And, like, it, this is like a hit, like, in other countries. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, he has, like, it's... It's doing well, and I mean, he took care of me when I did that film. That's actually not the first film I did for him. Like, I did uh, Shingles, the movie, not the actual disease or whatever. It's 
I think that one was on Amazon or something, right? Yeah, the, and it's on Tubi now too. Okay, okay. So oh, so we, like, could, so we could watch it for free. There you yeah, go. so it, that one's pretty much like an adult parody of Goosebumps. Okay. And they're based on these books written by this group called Authors and Dragons. So I had a really cool role in there that I really enjoyed. That's it was awesome. like the sidekick to like the main guy. It's That's like a four tale anthology. So yeah, they're they're pretty they're nuts. I will say that. So, I feel I feel like if you were president of the United States, you would not have enough to do. <laughs> I, I like to stay busy, man. I'm very I'm ambitious and I want to be known for my work ethic and my accomplishments. So well, I think you see that. Um you see that a lot. Like I, I I you know, I mean God, WWE wrestlers, Drew McIntyre is in the new Batista movie, you know. Um That's the name. Right. I want the Batista career. You want the, that's what you know that's what, what I so want. So you keep talking about this, and I know these are like kind of um, you know, low budget movies, right? Yeah. And I keep thinking of the movie that had Rob Van Dam and Batista. And it was one of his earlier ones, and I can't remember the name of it, but I, I watched it on Netflix or something. And I just remember Batista awkwardly holding a newsie, <laughs> you know. And I'm just like, like every time I see him like be Drax or you know, uh, 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 have a lead role or uh, the next spy, my spy just came up on Amazon. Yeah. I'm just like, I just go back to that first movie where he's holding the awkwardly work. Uh, well, holding an Uzi in the worst, like, like you, you got to start somewhere and grow up from that, right? Well, if you go watch the first movie I was in, I was awkwardly holding an Uzi as yeah, well. I remember that actually. Yes. I remember the yes. Yes. Back to Vengeance. I got to do. That's fights why that to... connected in my head. Yeah. <laughs> See, so someday you're gonna be fucking Drax. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm cool with it. There you go. Hey, you know what? They're got to reboot Marvel sooner or later. Why not? Right. Yeah, I want to uh, be Blade for real. Yes. But, but I love Wesley Snipes, man. He, it's my guy. Did, did you see the the new? I did. And and what, what I, was I, I, I like screamed inside. I don't like talking movie theaters, but I was like hyped. I was hyped. The it was a I think it was like second or third day in. So like the whole crowd was like, <laughs> yeah, because was, it wasn't out yet, right? Yeah. So, um, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, remember us when you're doing part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'll, I'll never forget right. you guys, man. I drove all the way out here. That's you know? right. That, that is right. He, so he does all of this, and he's driving down from uh, Erie mm -hmm. to do this show. He's yeah. not He's not remoting or anything. No, yeah, no. I'll be up probably at 4.30 in the morning, get ready to go to the gym tomorrow. You know? Oh, it is my gosh. what it is. Jeez, bad. That, that's what it takes when you to, when you to champ. You know, it takes what it takes. You got to make appearances. You got to do what you got to do. This is your media tour. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, Dante, you, you ready for this? You know, it's, it's a lot that come with it. <laughs> is Dante doing any podcast this week? Is he traveling uh, uh, God knows where for this? I don't know. I mean, he'd be in the gym, though. That dude is... He, yeah, no doubt. No he he jacks. <laughs> I'll give him that. <laughs> That man swole. Uh, this is definitely one of the matches I'm looking forward to. Uh, again, NBA Exodus Pro's Journey 2 will be uh, Saturday at 6.05 p.m. Eastern. Love it. <laughs> yeah, you, I remember, like, I first saw that. I'm just, I, like, it, it took me a second to be like, 605, what is that? And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, NWA yeah. on TBS, of course, right? <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm just happy that we get out at a good time. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what. When I wrestled in Canada on Sunday, the show started at 2, and I was home, like, in my house with my dogs at 9 p.m. What? It's perfect. That's amazing. Perfect. Early wrestling shows. I don't know. I go do a three p.m. in uh, in in, in uh, south of Wheeling, and I still don't get home until ten p.m. I don't, I'm doing this wrong, obviously. Well, you so, got to pack up you, all this equipment and all that. I ain't, yeah, <laughs> and then we usually end up at Outback and yeah, oh, no, Texas, I, I, or I, Texas, Texas Roadhouse, and Bradley's tagging along. And <laughs> now I pack my food and I'm gone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm out of here. It's, <laughs> it's a long. Day. Usually, it's a long day after about three or four days on of shows so yeah. we're just like i'm just gonna eat all the bread at the table and just <laughs> you're done we're be done drive if I've been, I do that, be tired I'm, I'm just, yeah and it's like i don't want to get in the car i yeah. don't just just give, give me peanuts <laughs> texas row house yeah. love in uh, uh love you tridelphia uh <laughs> anyways all right we're gonna go to the break real quick we'll come back we're gonna uh, uh take a look into uh, uh what all in is this weekend right keeping up with all the shows and I uh, have some more with Pretty Boy Smooth, the MD, NWA Exodus Pro Just Midwest NWA World Midwest. Heavyweight oh, Champion. Man. No, I got to give you the big one, man. <laughs> Come on. A big belt, big championship announcement. Come on. We'll be right <laughs> back after this. The 
Urban Playboy Pretty Boy Smooth is not a placeholder champion. When you were out hurt, I stepped up and did what you could. Multiple defenses, multiple states, outside the country, I've taken this championship to heights deserving of the NWA name. Something you, Dante, could never do. You should be thanking me. I'm the most dominant big man in professional wrestling, the G.O.D. of CLE, and at Journey 2, the Purple Rain will continue. Exodus Pro's first wrestling event, a journey home. Dante Casanova shouldn't have been on that card. Why? Because I wasn't a name yet. Dante Casanova wasn't on anybody's radar, and that was their first mistake. So what did I do? <laughs> well, I did what I do best. I bet on myself. I showed up to preface. I conquered preface, and I earned my spot. I sent a message to everyone in the back. You see, Dante Casanova wasn't just here to be another roster member, no. no. Dante Casanova was here to be the roster member. And with each passing show, I showed just why I am the most dominant force in all of Exodus Pro. And as I'm about to have the most defining moment in my career, an injury took me out. In comes Pretty Boy Smooth. Now, PB, you stepped up when I had to step down, and for that, you have my respect. But most importantly, now you have my attention because you have something that belongs to me. You have my NWA Exodus Midwest Championship. Have you broke your daily bread, Dante? Have you broke your daily bread? I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like it discussed from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.
We are back, Wrestling Mayhem Show. We got uh, uh well, Bradley's here, and uh, and uh, and Pretty Boy Smooth, the <gasps> NWA, NWA Midwest Champion. I want to do the short version this time. <laughs> you had some big news you didn't you you wanted to mention oh, <laughs> over yes, the break because yes, yes. your uh, your PR manager here uh, reminded you of something. Yeah, shout out Katie Dutters. Like I wouldn't be where I'm at without her. She's she's held me down from the beginning. You know, I just want you to give you your flowers publicly. But um, yeah, big news. My merch store is finally reopened. I stopped selling merch online for a very long time for personal reasons, <laughs> but it's back now. I just put up a, a new shirt design. It's called the Purple Rain. It's to commemorate my um, championship right now. You know, first ever NWA Midwest champion. So go pick that up. And I will actually have a new shirt dropping this Friday, most likely. So Awesome. Oh, yeah. We've had uh, we've had a bit of commentary from the from the uh, chat room here throughout it, throughout. So I wanted to touch base on that a little bit. Over on the I think this is the Mayhem Show YouTube. Jesse Fortini says, uh, "Tell a champ." I said, "What's up?" Uh, sending love from Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. Have somebody out there book me. You know what's out? Who, what's out there? Limitless. I, I'll go to Limitless. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, too too familiar with the uh, uh, New New England scene. Uh, so I've seen some boxing out there though. So yeah. that was interesting. Uh, so. <laughs> Who else lives? Isn't Dijak from Massachusetts? Is he? I think he's from like out there somewhere. Well, I kind of had a, a mini run in with him before. I wonder if mm. I'm going to see him down the line. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see I it. I saw For that. sure. Yeah. I saw that look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Uh, he's, he's available and in, 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 in around the Indies right now. So, And I, and I hear doing good stuff. I, I was talking with some people that work with him. He's, he's really great on shows. So. Um, uh, so all in is this weekend. That's the other big show happening. So let's mention that a little bit. Uh, that's Sunday. So it's not in the way of NWA. You can watch both shows. You have so many choices this weekend. Yes. Uh, and, and, and maybe NWA is free on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but, uh, uh, a lot of stuff happened in there. Uh, of course the big one is, is this, Brian Danielson's retirement match question mark uh, against against uh, Swerve Strickland, who has been doing I think has been doing an amazing job as champ. Uh, really has kind of like you know kind of risen to the occasion I think for the most part here. I think he's doing a better job than Joe. Oh yeah, uh, Joe, hey, Joe. I am not saying Joe did a bad job. Okay. But I think uh, he's bringing up a little bit higher than Joe did. I think Swerve has a little bit more to prove than Joe. That's part of it. Prob- this. Yeah, that's yeah. Pr- that's part of it. Mm-hmm. He 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 holds that title like he's got a, a, a on the chip on his shoulder. That's what I'm trying to say. He's he's holding that title like uh, I, I don't care if I have his title. I still need to prove myself. Mm-hmm. And he's facing some serious opponents for that title and everything. And now he's going to face uh, Brian Danielson. Um, so that should be a good match. Yeah, and, and really, I think we're in a position like I couldn't tell you who's going to win this. I don't know if this is this is Brian being done. I, it, it's weird how they've been playing it lately. Um, and like I think Swerve like needs to have a long title run at this point. Like I think he could, he really could at this point with this thing. So. If he loses it, how many months would that be? Jeez. Four? Was it Revolution he won the belt? Could be. Maybe. So March. So five it's months. It's been four or five months, so he'll have at that point. So I so don't know. Not, so, so again, not incredibly long. Mm-hmm. Joe had it for three, right? Three or four? So. Yeah, yeah, because he would have gone in at World's End into Revolution. I, uh-huh. If I have that right, I'm sure chat room's going to correct me in a moment here. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, and I agree with you. These these top championships can't be flipping over every four or five months. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, WWE's learning that themselves. You know, they, they're they're not racing to get that title off of Cody. Mm-hmm. Tina's in the chat room saying, "I wouldn't be surprised to see a certain commentator get involved on this." So <clears throat> uh, Nigel McGuinness, who has been vocally very anti Brian, <laughs> yeah, he's not. Ha- yeah, yeah. What was heard he call him a that. clam digger? Every week on the show. Uh, this is honestly, this is the one. Sorry, Will Ospreay. This is the one I'm most excited for. Tony Storm and Mariah May. Yeah. For the Women's Championship. This has been such a fun feud. Absolutely. 
is well, the fun story, not just the feud, the whole story for the last what was seven months a year, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's been a nice long story. I love they acknowledge because I think I think maybe Tina brought it up in the chat room the week it happened when uh, Mariah turned on on Tony and and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's an old movie and then like the next like the next day I saw Tony Khan saying yeah it's this movie from the fifties and we've been doing a key by key and it's been perfect you know and it was I, I think like R J City came up with it which of course R J did right right so um, what um busted open Dave Lagreca was like saying after that turn he was saying Tony cannot. This is his opinion. Tony cannot be coming out in character. She's got to be herself now. And I was like, in my mind, I'm saying to my Sirius XM, absolutely not. This is, this, is, this, is what, this is what you do on this show when you're listening. You yell at the, uh, you, you yell at the, uh, the, the, the podcast machine. Uh, often, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, except if, if PB's on the show, then if, I'm, uh, if he can't hear me, I'm still saying sir. But otherwise, yeah, I'm I'm screaming my, my head. No, um, but I'm like, no, absolutely not. Tony has got to be in character, and she's doing that, and she's you know mm -hmm. doing such a great job mm -hmm. with that. She's but I think Mariah's win Mariah's winning the title. It's probably in different movies at this point. It's so funny. Uh huh. Um, AEW American Championship MJF and Will Ospreay two. That's got to be good. They went an hour on Dynamite. <laughs> I just I'm how getting you, caught up. I just saw his uh, MJF's match with Fletcher. Fletcher? Oh yeah, yeah, Kyle Fletcher Kyle from a couple Fletcher. weeks ago. Yeah, seriously. And that is, uh, like, like I don't know how you how you 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 follow up a a near hour uh, match with this, mm -hmm. um, like on this stage. So other than MJF is just being the most American. Going to what was it? Uh, going to CMLL as the American champion, and I think they dropped a flag and everything on them, right? Mm -hmm. So doing the whole gimmick. Uh, TBS Championship: Mercedes Monet and Britt Baker. That should be good. Um, I I got the feeling like a lot of the people do that. Uh, Mercedes Monet. I don't think she's been that impressive at mm -hmm. AEW. Some people might disagree, um, but. Uh, it, it's not as impressive as one would have thought that she would be, but but she has a chance here. She uh, Britt Baker can have a good, really good match with, the, with those two. So um, maybe she, she'll build, keep building herself up. Um, a lot of other matches there, but I mean, I think this will be a good one. So it was announced All In is going <clears> to <throat> be in Texas next year at the Ranger Stadium, which they've been doing that region that residency for the last like month and a half uh, at the esports arena. I the one thing I've loved about that, of course, I'm the I'm I'm the one that's paying for Ring of Honor. Uh, so in watching <laughs> that, I feel like I'm the only one sometimes. Um, but I've been digging because they just had a championship like uh, episode where like you know they defend a bunch of the belts, and um, I feel like Ring of Honor, you know. You know, and I don't know. I don't know if you if you you attended old Ring of Honor shows as a fan uh, growing up or anything. Like I, I feel like Ring of Honor feels better in a small venue, like for that vibe and what they try to accomplish there. And like that esports arena, like it was really kind of hitting, you know, and had a lot of energy. Versus like you know filming matches after Rampage and Dynamite. Oh my God, live show, <laughs> you know, and with the fans that were left in the arena. You know, like I feel well, like I, I feel like it deserves the dedication of that. Like in my mind, I want to put this out in the universe. In my mind, I would love to see Ring of Honor separate off enough, and maybe this is the goal when they build it up enough. Maybe this is like how NXT is going on tour now uh, for their CW uh, uh, debuts the next, you know, those first two weeks. Um, and, and I'd be curious to see if that continues or if they go back to the Performance Center. But um, I would love to see Ring of Honor just do like a small venue tour, like for their tapings, like mm -hmm. maybe not Stage AE. Or anything like that, like that small, but like, well, actually, I don't know what the in between is from the Peterson Event Center and Stage AE. Like, what uh, what is that wrestling venue? You know, uh, that you could stick. Do in you that. think the the roster is strong enough? Um, to compared to, compared to what Ring of Honor was, yeah, absolutely. The I mean, I could one issue I could see is. Why should I watch Ring of Honor? The Ring of Honor champion is, on, you know, on who's Ring of Honor champion? I'm going Mark Briscoe. Yeah, very good. No, he lost the title, didn't he? Mm, Am I way off? No. Okay, I'm way off. I'm sorry. 
why am I watching Ring of Honor? I can watch Mark Briscoe on uh, Dynamite. I can watch him on, you know, it doesn't make it special like, oh, God, because you still have to pay to watch Ring of Honor, the, the show itself. Sure, right? sure. But so, if you're seeing a lot of stars that are on TV and, like, you know, Ring of Honor comes to your town, but AEW has it recently, you get to yeah. see Mark Briscoe and stuff like that, right? So, I mean, uh, the pay-per-views by themselves, uh, we, we attended the one WrestleMania weekend. Um, and they're it was, doing well? It was, yeah, it was, okay. yeah, I think it was filled pretty well. It was like, again, kind of a piece of event center on campus kind of basketball arena kind of thing. So, like, I think it filled out pretty decent there. Fair um, enough. And that was a lot of, oh, okay, everybody's in town for WrestleMania, sure. But, like, still, like, that was a lone thing. And, um, and uh, you know, I think there was a good vibe to it. So, and it, it was a really fun show. It was a really fun show. I'm really glad we got to attend that and see that. And that's when Mark won the championship, I think. First time Ring of Honor champion. Mm-hmm. So, it was, it was some really good moments. So, I, I think there's, I think there's opportunity there. I think it, I think it, it, you know, Again, they keep saying there's big announcements coming up. Apparently, All In in Texas was not the big announcement, <laughs> apparently. So, we'll, well see what somebody happens. Somebody was making a suggestion that they made it now so that they don't have some awkward thing where they, they're they in, they're in England and says, next year, we're not going to be here. You know, they were the one Yeah, that, yeah, that get it out of the way so they're not, like, expecting to. And also, then that spikes tales, uh, sales in London because if you're like, oh, you guys just can't always come back to London, I'll come next year. And now you're like, Oh shit! Oh, oh boy, this is my last yeah. chance. I have to go to Texas. I'm from England. Where's Texas? <laughs> also, <laughs> What's Texas? And also, what is a Texas? Uh, so, uh, but anyways, that shows on at eleven o'clock in the morning here. So, so uh, Tina had the uh, 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 math in the chat room actually. So, do you like your pay reviews at odd times? Because uh, uh, zero hour is set to start at noon Eastern time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, by the way, that match is going to be. <laughs> Well, it not Nightingale into into an Ishii against Chris Statlander and Stokely. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, and I think the winner gets a stipulation for uh, Willow <clears throat> and Chris at all out. In um, I forget where that's happening. Um, yeah, and it's going to be one p.m. Eastern time. So if you're and if you're on the West Coast, the show starts at nine a.m. for zero hour. So get your Cheerios. Oh gosh! Ready and uh, watch. I have not seen what time the Berlin show is yet. Probably around the same time. Honestly, I don't know how time zones work in in, in Europe. Anyways, Bradley, you wanted a moment. I did want a moment. Um, Eight eighty, the last show I was at had the full good seeing you in the crowd. By the way, what? I'm sorry. Good seeing you in the crowd. By the way, good being there. Um, we're seeing the full-fledged uh, uh, invasion of Black Hand Society. For those that do not know what the Black Hand Society is, can you fill them in? Black Hand Society started in West Virginia. And uh, at that point, it was Ty, Ty Cross, Edric Everhart, Jack Pollock, and Peyton Graham, all led by Marcus Mann. And they ran roughshod over West Virginia for years, mm-hmm. and eventually that you know the, the things you know Matt Con uh, Edric Everhart was a champion. Uh, Jack and Peyton were tag champions for years, mm-hmm. um, but eventually uh, Edric lost his title to Matt Connard. And there's a point to this part. Pa- uh, Pollock and Peyton Graham lost their titles to Remy and Keith Hot. Mm-hmm. Remy LeVay. Remy LeVay, thank you. Um, they then uh, started another organization in the Pittsburgh area, but that only went for so long because of problems with the promoter. And, every, and you know, I'm not going to mention the promoter, but when everybody had problems with the promoter, and today that promoter, promoter doesn't really have too much to promote. Mm-hmm. And uh, but now that they're in 880, they've brought in Matt Connor. They've brought in mm-hmm. uh, Remy LeVay is the new champion there, mm-hmm. and they brought in a lot of creepy videos. And um, well, Marcus Mann made a number of videos on his Instagram, which I would implore 880 fans to go and listen to. It takes a little while, but 
he's going over legacies and he's talking about people that he feels have been quote unquote forgotten. He talks about Shirley Doe. He talks about Jake Garrett. He talks about J um, Quinn Magnum saying that uh, he feels these people are being forgotten. And then he's got one more video. It's about the, the long version is about 20 minutes, but it's still worth a listen. His frustration is that he feels like he's going to get forgotten. And he needs to do something now to create his legacy. He, he feels like he made these legacies in these other organizations that because of controversy, those leg legacies are lost. Mm -hmm. They're not lost. His legacy, the, the legacy of the people that wrestled in West Virginia is not lost. Just that organization is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the organization in, in Pittsburgh. So, no, I don't think he's being forgotten. I don't, I don't believe that. And I also, you know what they, they say in wrestling, and PB, you can go along with this, they always say, wrestling doesn't know you anything. <clears throat> and But if I didn't know better, I would say Marcus is coming out now after his years saying he thinks wrestling owes him something. Mm -hmm. So he's going to decide he's going to take it, and he's taking it the least respectful way possible. Mm -hmm. you know, with interference and all the things that um, are just going to, you know, lessen the accomplishments that you're making. He could do this without doing it the way he's doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I just don't feel like he's doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. That's my, that, I guess that's my rant, rant there. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's interesting, though. It's interesting to see this this group together because um, I, I know I never I never seen the group because I've always been somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So and and you know not places that I've been able to see the video or anything like that. So I've always heard about this. So it's interesting to see yeah, it play and, out. There. And the, the interesting part is Jack's actually on the other side of the fence from the Black Hands. Mm -hmm. He's on eight eighty side. But but you know Marcus thinks he's just going to take over eight eighty. Because he wants to have a legacy someplace, mm -hmm. but the late he's already he has a legacy. It may not be talked about every day. It might not be talked, but there's people that talk about it. Mm -hmm. I have friends I talk about the what they did in, in PWX and and, uh, and what they did in other places. But um, I just feel like he's going about the wrong way, this, and I got that off my chest there. This was very informative because I've always seen those Black Hand Society T-shirts and had no <clears throat> clue what that was. Because yeah, you work with Edric and everybody a lot, uh, like down in Uniontown, right? Yeah, so I had no clue what that was. <laughs> it, it was I a, met Edric when he was System Elite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that, this was like before that, right? Because mm -hmm. I remember like we'd have these guys on the show and they tell us about all this history of Black Hand Society, and I'm just like, Ooh. it's always interesting because there's always, um, you know, this is. This is something we talk about. We were talking about before the show with uh, what well, I guess I did in the promo <laughs> about how we're bringing up history and stuff and as much as we can, um, you know, because I always hear stories about like, yeah, they did this and this, and and Keith was talking about the uh, what was the team, the the group that Keith Hot had down there in uh, in West Virginia that we filmed. Oh, there, there was the cage uh, match and everything. It was like him and Ty and Edric the resurgence and Tony. or something like that. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's just <clears throat> you know, I would know nothing about it if there wasn't. You know, I, you know, sorry, I think video, but if there's not video of it, does it exist, right? Other than on Cage Match. Did it even get the Cage Match? Um, you know, there's, there's your legacy. Ask Cowpoke. The legacy's <laughs> there. Yeah, the legacy is there. It's not lost. But also, like, how much stuff, you know how many times I have, especially the Order of Veterans, hey, do you have this match from so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so? And I was like, bro, I don't, you know, and it's from like an age where they were VHS tapes. You're lucky if you have half of those matches. You know what? You know how many matches of like CM Punk from the 2000s probably do not exist on film mm -hmm. or in, are in somebody's closet in a box somewhere. And that's the only place it exists. Like, it's crazy when you think about that lost thing, you know, like I, it drives me nuts to see a wrestling show not filmed. I remember Matt Cross, uh, I'm sorry, Matt uh, Connard. 
on this show saying he had a match with Chris Hero that was lost, but it's actually, I found it for him. It's on YouTube. There you go. There you, you go. Know that, um, sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, we all went up in a blizzard, you know, like maybe an inch, inch of snow all over the roads, you know, sliding to get to this place to see Chris Hero and Matt Connor face each other. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have any matches that you, that you've seen like that, that you had that you wish you had that footage of like like in your history? Um, no, no. You've been very. I mean, there, there are some that I'm glad are never going to see the light of day. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Every time I post an old match from several years ago, I'm just like, who's going to hate this match is out there in the public? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I definitely have a few of those. But I mean, you I, know I'm sure I, I posted whenever, a couple of them. Whenever I need footage, I'm going to message you and so yeah, I yeah. officially get it. I love when people message me for shows that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> I, I do. I will say this. I do have another YouTube account that mm -hmm. like is not accessible to like fans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I have like some of my practice matches on there. Mm -hmm. And those are cool. Crazy. That's it's like for the very and, special Pretty Boy Smooth DVD that we're going to put out someday, right? <laughs> yeah, there's like a video of like JJ Rumham trying to do a 450 on Bro Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh I, I, gosh. I got, yeah, I got some crazy stuff, bro. That ain't that ain't never getting out. No. That ain't never getting out. <laughs> those are just those are just folklore at this point. Yeah. I yes. mean, the only clip that I would want is like my debut. Like I actually hit um Shane Douglas in the head with a trash can. That was your debut? That was my debut. Oh, God. Hell. But I actually have the clip, kind of. It's on my um, my Instagram. If, you, if I scroll back all the way to the beginning, it's like yeah. the fourth like thing I posted. But I don't have that. I wasn't actually in the match. I was just security. Sure. And then I just hit him with the trash can, and I joined J-Rock and Rex Brody. So It always doing? feels like when... like. If you're small and you're starting out, it's more likely your win loss percentage is going to be low. Mm -hmm. But when you're big and you start out, it's more likely your win loss percentage is going to be higher. I mean, I'll, I'll tell just, you this. That's just physics. That's just physics. That's just physics. That's just, you know. Yeah, I mean. Hey, when you I, got two degrees. That's just physics, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I debuted at AIW, I beat a bunch of people. It was Matt Justice, Eddie Kingston, T Money. I'm sure there's like one or two other guys in there. It's interesting. It, yeah, it's kind of interesting where it goes because I love like like you talk like Big Show does interviews. He's like, I got the worst record in wrestling, <laughs> right? Because he was always the guy that, you know, there's always like you know the guy that needs to be you know for somebody to overcome, right? And 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 I think that's cool that you're like you you. I don't know if that that doesn't happen everywhere in indie wrestling, and you've been really good about being like the the. the the top guy with your size and, and riding yeah. that and not being like something for somebody else to overcome. Well, I mean, yes and no. Like when I first started, definitely was not like that. You know, like I told you who I lost to at a promotion I'll never work for again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like we've, we've had those times, but I feel like a lot of wrestling is perception and like how you carry yourself and, and believability. And I've turned myself into what is an actual monster in that ring, you know? And especially with my actual martial arts background, I don't tell people about, you know what I mean? Like, I think like it's the first I've heard about this. Yeah. Like, Me too. like my first sport was martial arts. It wasn't basketball or anything like that. What, what uh, you jujitsu? You, uh, it, mine was more like a kickboxing style. Okay. All right. But, well, the truth is I don't talk about it. Cause if I get in like, an, a fight in the street like that's the kind of stuff that like they would take a tough guy you go yeah. to law you know what i mean like mm -hmm. like i think boxers like their hands get like licensed mm -hmm. it's like as actual weapons so like i'm not about to be telling people i know how to fight i'm just gonna mind my business and then if they have to find out i apologize <laughs> you know what i've been doing mma uh, uh video for three four years now and i've never seen anybody as big as you in the mma ring and i don't i don't know if there is i don't know if that does happen in there I mean, I was, before I picked up professional wrestling, I was looking into boxing. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I do have, like, a, an itch to, like, do some of that kind of stuff, but not to that level. Just more like the So, train. so one day down the line, we're going to get Pretty Boy Smooth and Bloodsport. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay. <laughs> all right. You yeah. know. Yeah. Look out Tom Lawler or whatever. You already uh, faced I, Victor, I've Victor wrestled Benjamin. Tom Tom Lawler oh, Tom's fun. amazing. Tom is awesome. <clears throat> you already yeah. faced Victor Benjamin. Well, he was going to start training me, actually. I was yeah. Just, yeah, I was just keeping that low. Mm. But, you know, mm -hmm. you never know. He's training everybody. He, tra they, he trained Rev and Rev won uh, yeah. Rough and Rowdy. Yeah. So. Yeah, you you never know. A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of these dudes, people will be thinking, like, 
wrestlers or are really like quote unquote tough guys. You'll you'll be surprised how many dudes can actually like really throw down. You don't want to find out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, side note is there's some conversation in the chat room I wanted to, I wanted to mention for the throwback here. Um, guys, for I had the chance to see Second City Saints, Punk and Banana Steel versus Prophecy Daniels, Danny Math, and BJ Whitmer back in the Dayton years ago. Not sure if those ones are on early shows or that's in the ROH catalog. That, that was a nice, that's another point because um, Jabrowski that does be, a lot that of this. Ken Birch has said that. What's that? I bet that's Ken Birch. No, that was Tina. Oh, it's Tina. Okay, Tina, okay. Tina used to roll in the the Dayton, Cincinnati era back in the oh, day, and and, and okay. work. It's, she actually did, I believe, video for Heartland Wrestling. Wow. And and that's one that um, uh, you know Dabrowski is really good about unearthing a lot of this footage. He found all this like Von Eric footage that WWE didn't own. You know, um, you know the Heartland Wrestling stuff with like a lot of when they were bring, when that was basically one of the territories of WWE. F, whatever it was at the time, was bringing people through. I think John Cena was on one of the things we put on a DVD. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, like, like you know, different era. But, like, again, those tapes are just like, hey, this guy has this over here and doesn't have the facility to turn this into something people can digest. But here's, like, all this stuff and all these people came through for one reason or another, you know, and this got lost, you know. You know, it, it, it's really it's really interesting to see that kind of thing. But um, Dombrowski's a good dude. I like him. He actually helped me a little bit behind the scenes with some stuff. When I was good head, good head on. Yeah, it was like he was doing um, commentary for Enjoy Wrestling one time when I worked with him, and I was trying to like explain to him like the Urban Playboy and whatnot. And he helped me mm-hmm. find a way to make it more digestible for people to understand, as opposed to being like so layered. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Dombrowski for that. I don't take much. I don't. I. I don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't take much opinion. I don't uh, absorb much opinion from people that think Dombrowski doesn't know what he's talking about. Because like he's one of the be- one of the best heads in the business. Has been there. Has seen everything. Has as honestly given advice to people that have like freaking run with it and gone so far. You know what I mean. So he's if you if you're on a show and Dombrowski's on it, pick his brain. He's one of the vets. He's one of the good ones, and he's willing to. If you're willing to receive it, he's willing to give you the advice, yeah. which a lot of the good vets are too. So, and I think we're we're really fortunate because I I know again you've been around the area here, Erie, Cleveland. You know we talked about with Exodus a lot of great minds backstage. Um, hell, I'm learning a little bit of things about organizing behind the scenes because knowing those people came from you know the big shows, um, or do or currently doing one of the big shows here with NWA. Um, you know we have so many vets that I've seen. Backstage at 2PW, backstage at um, uh, uh, RWA, backstage at VCW that just have been a bunch of places. And it drives me nuts when people aren't talking to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can tell, you know, and, yeah, and it's mean, just like, man, this is a resource. And and do the bare minimum, have a conversation, man, after your match. And just ask ask the vet how, how it went and listen. Yeah, I mean, there's so many tangibles with that. Because on one hand, you have people that may just be shy and don't want to say anything. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, with this boom of social media, if someone has, like, crazy engagement or, like, they got over doing some, like, stupid shit, sometimes you can't, like, tell them, Mm -hmm. like, hey, like, let's work on this, let's work on that. Mm -hmm. Because their mind is already going off those endorphins, you know what I mean? So what's, what's always helped me with my career is... At the end of the day, I'm, I'm very stoic about it. You know, like I never think I have the perfect match or that I know everything because how else can I grow? You know, like the greatest thing for me at Exodus is I have EC3 there to get feedback from when it comes to in-ring stuff and whatnot. And then I have Aaron Stevens to help me on the promo side of mm-hmm. things. So it's like I remember messaging Aaron Stevens at 1 a.m. Like he didn't answer, but <laughs> I, I just so happened to be – recording filming stuff and he got back you're, you're on you're on that wrestler uh uh, uh yeah, time frame <laughs> yeah it's like i really care about this you yeah know? like i love professional wrestling i want to mm-hmm. be the best i can be and i'm competitive so if people don't want to grow and learn then that's on them i'm just going to keep doing it and i'm gonna keep getting myself in the right position you feel me <laughs> i think we're talking you about don't hold, you don't hold on to that title without keep learning mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you said it not me yeah, mm-hmm. 
Uh, Bradley's going to make it in the next Exodus promo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, we're going to get ready, rolling here because, uh, uh, well, maybe he's got to get back to Erie sometime tonight, too. So yeah, from nice Pittsburgh. Nice two-hour drive. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking, I'll be doing that in two weeks. I think, I'm, I think uh, are we on the same show in two weeks here up there? If I'm oh, not mistaken. In Erie? Yeah. Oh, so let's talk about that real quick. Okay, real sh- quick shout out. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's probably going to be one of my biggest matches ever. You know, I'm really focused this Saturday on beating Dante Casanova. Yeah. Because if I do... You don't want to look past that. No, nah, you got to focus on him. Because he, he, he's a dog, but I'm a wolf. You know what I mean? But um, if I win that, then on September 7th, I'll be in Erie, Pennsylvania, which is not my hometown, but now where I reside for Big League Pro. And I will be defending the NWA Midwest Championship against who I believe is the best wrestler in the world right now unsigned in Myron Reed. Um, oh, Myron, I haven't seen yeah. in a while. Love it. Yeah, that's that's a match I've wanted for years, mm-hmm. but no one has ever thought to book because we live in this environment of, oh, we don't want to do styles clashes. We want to put all the athletic flippy guys together. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like what I loved about wrestling was the styles clash. Like what happens when you put this guy against this guy? It doesn't even – work the same you know yeah, what i mean yeah yeah so um myron's a guy that will drag you into deep waters he has mm-hmm. an unbelievable gas tank he's wrestled everywhere from the pwg to tna and um he's a member of the rascals even though he wasn't in part of those wwe segments <laughs> and uh he's hungry you know what i mean like like i truly believe he's one of the best and i've wanted that match for a long time so I'm excited, and both my parents will be there. And I'm not about to get my ass beat in front of my dad because my dad's from the south. He don't, he don't play that. I don't so. think I've seen your parents in the crowd yet. Is this, uh, you know, are are they more Wardlow mom or are they more like like softball parents? All right, when they come when they come see you. No, my dad's a psychopath. Like he, so uh, Wardlow mom. My dad would get technical fouls from my middle school basketball. Okay. From oh, the, my. From oh the bleachers. Geez. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Sorry, Dad. How does he react see... to wrestling? Well, he's never seen me wrestle live before. Oh, this is the first time. Oh. Yeah. So, like, him and my gra- my grandma are the ones that got me into wrestling because he worked five jobs. Mm-hmm. So, whenever he get late, at, like, home late at night, Monday night, Raw was on, we'd watch it for, like, an hour, this, okay. that, and third. So, when I first started, I had a show – in Queens that I actually drove Ethan Page and, and Hot Sauce uh, Tracy Williams to. And my mom was at that one. We wrestled, I wrestled the Carnies. And that was like, I was like a year and a half. Yeah. It was a crazy night too. Like I drove from Cleveland, like from AIW all the way to New York. Yeah, it was, it was, and they slept in the car. They were great. Yeah, that's I just, like eight hours. I was it? the real young boy. Like I just yeah. sucked it up. Yeah. But yeah, um, that was the only time my mom seen me live. Now they've seen other videos and matches of sure. mine, but they, they've they never seen me really in my element. They've never seen mm-hmm. me like in Erie, Pennsylvania, like mm-hmm. in a crowd that's going to like love me. You know what I mean? So they, that, that big league crowd is so great. Yes. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he takes it and reacts to everything. So Please point them out to me. Oh, like, you'll, you'll I, know. I'm what, oh, no. Oh, like you won't even have nah, to. <laughs> nah, you, you'll know it's my dad. We kind of look similar. He He's okay. more dark skinny and shorter than me. But okay. All right. You'll know. All right. <laughs> I, I am. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm assigning myself the ringside camera again for that show. So I'll be out there looking. So <laughs> I'm sure hey. I'll hear it over my headset. Hey, uh, and my mom just she just don't want me to get hurt. But I mean, it's mm-hmm. sports. This isn't ballet. You know, it's mm-hmm. very physical and I. And I wrestle very physical, so mm-hmm. you know, worry about him getting hurt, not me. <laughs> you seem to go when you're in Erie. I feel like you go a little harder. You know, I I don't know if it's that hometown uh, vibe or something, well, but it's it's a multitude of things. Like one, I started in Erie, like 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 that crowd has seen me grow up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? From yeah, when I was that's true. Like Twenty three to now thirty from baby P. You know baby. what I mean? <laughs> so you have that. And then also part of it is like I went through a phase in my career where I felt very disrespected, you know, by promoters and like other and other people in wrestling just because they never saw a playboy as like a dominant big man. You know, it's like they didn't understand the persona and who I am when in reality I'm just being myself. Like I'm a, a dude from New York that's fly, that's good looking, that attracts women, but will beat your ass. Mm-hmm. Like there's no need to like 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a game. Like, What's to explain? Yes, yeah, like two things can be true, but when you when we're in this box where we're always stereotyped and you have to be a certain thing, like that doesn't exist anymore. So like before I have my matches, I, I clock in and I lock in and I think like there's somebody out there that think this is a game. So I'm about to show you it's not. And and that's just the type of energy I bring it. And I mean, as you can see, I'm winning, I'm getting champions and championships and you know, dudes is out here with their chest looking swole. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Well, that's going to be Big League uh, Pro, and uh, it's Kickoff Chaos is the show. That's going to be September 7th up there at the Erie Sports Center. Really awesome facility up there uh, that they've been running uh, lately. Um, and it's they got a lot of room to grow, and they've filled it once <laughs> they've been yeah, filling it. Uh, I think I don't think they've... We've had over 800 people at one Yeah, yeah. Yes, go I, get those tickets. And I think out. the low number was 400. Yeah. So yeah, there there's a lot of cool stuff going up uh, going on up there. It is worth the drive from from Pittsburgh. And what's what's cool is it, it it's it's like an equal drive roughly from Buffalo, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. So yes. like which also makes a nice mix of talent, you know. And then yeah, you know is accessible. Uh, Spencer Slade's on there. That's yeah, yeah, NWA superstar. The in, the Indies are thriving right now. It's great. You know? It's I'm awesome. Sure it's awesome. Well, uh, real quick, I uh, want to give a shout out to in a tra- chat room. Uh, let us know what you learned from wrestling, uh, and I'll be looking out for it here in a moment, and uh, we'll get rolling here. But uh, thanks to our friend Slice on Broadway, New York City style, Yins are made, uh, Beachview Carnegie, the original one, right up the tracks, right up the street here from our location here at Sorgashan Media in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've been so- supporting us for over the decade, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Thank you so much to our friends, sliceonbroadway.com. Yes, it's the place that we had Beastman uh, destroy their venue one time. <laughs> so I need to dig that video up again now that he's a... It was their fault. They tried to give him salad. They did try to give him salad. I don't know what they were thinking. They've got good I mean, salad. That's all nice, but is a good don't salad. give that we to We got Beastman. a salad for one of our patrons tonight. So, you know, it's 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 some good stuff there. Was the salad good? We got a... Yes, we got a good, good salad. Um, but thank you so much to our friend Slice on Broadway. Um... What did we learn from wrestling this week? Uh, Tina learned that uh, Rhea is for the children and brunch and wrestling for the next few weekends. Love the combo. She's uh, referring to the uh, Berlin and uh, all in uh, London and Berlin, respectively. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's 9 a.m. start for her. So <laughs> We're back to the 80s and when TBS had a... A wrestling show, studio wrestling show from eight to nine o'clock. Stu- yeah, well, studio wrestling. We're gonna have three nine to four to hours of wrestling <clears throat> in, in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. At least we won't be tired, you know, at this point. So, um, Bradley, what'd you learn for wrestling this week? Uh, this weekend, I learned two different things. The first thing I learned is that I can do a referee uh, George Ross impression. <laughs> <laughs> because I was listening to it, and sometimes, I mean, you know, I don't have to try it. Yeah, I, I play with it. I've used, Tell I've me used, more, Bubby. As you've seen, no, and I've, I've, uh, I, I can do enough that if I hear it enough, and I start going, hey, you got to get out of the ropes. Come on, guys. Look out, come on. One, two. Come on, guys. Wow. And Does uh, that seem right? Does that, is that the voice that's ringing in your ears in the middle of the ring? I'm just, I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. My my brain goes into mush after like 10 p.m. <laughs> so I'm here, but I'm I'm here. I'm not here. He he was probably you were probably more like all of a sudden Brad started yelling. Oh my god! Yeah, it, it might be a little bit more of that. <laughs> oh, we gotta get you. But uh, yeah, he's out so there. You know, I, he's in the ropes. Come on, one, two. You, okay, come on, guys, get back in the ring. One, two. And uh, the second thing I learned is I went. I was telling that to a couple folks. I went up to <laughs> to, to uh, Gianni. And I was doing that for for Gianni. And the second thing I learned is there's a couple of guys back there in the locker room that can do George Ross impressions. But it was at that point. It it, it, it does go around. It, it does go around. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's and, a lot of practice happening. Uh, at that happening. point, George Ross happened to walk by me. <laughs> and I said, hey, George, how you doing over there? How's it going? And he said, hey, it's going real good, Brad. It's going real good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It took me till just now to realize who you guys were talking about. <laughs> yeah, black hair, George. Yes, Larry I, George. I had no clue who you were talking about for a second. This is why I mean my brain goes a bush. But yes, that is very dead on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Uh, what did you learn from wrestling recently? 
um, A Train throws an amazing bicycle kick. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of his stuff. <laughs> I'm just, just like studying lately. Um, like I go through like random phases. Like I'll study Brock Lesnar for a month, mm-hmm. and then, like A Train, and then mm-hmm. uh, Shane Taylor. So I'm always just trying to you know, learn different things. I I did learn a few things watching Shane Taylor uh, wrestle Dante Casanova, mm-hmm. and dude can't take a punch; he goes down. Mm. It's a hell of a punch, though. Hey man, I got it's a hell one. of a punch. It is, but I got one of those. Good, good. Hey, you get, call it the yeah, hoss cross. Yeah, you got that kickboxing in you, right? So I got a few different things. Mm-hmm. Always keep bullets in the chamber. Um, I learned. I I watched an entire um. Just a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I went to the Neo Pro show, like I mentioned, up in Salem, Ohio, and um, Patrick Hayes came out. And you know, it, it, most mo- most people listening know what that means. Uh, but you know, very long intro, <laughs> the longest intro, a lot of dumping out of the ring. There was a guy. Was it the I'm a star that he comes out to? Right. This guy was like the one big Patrick Hayes fan. I have video of it I put up. He's just jamming. He friended me on Facebook after I put the video up. <laughs> um, so he's like completely down with Patrick Hayes. And it said directly in front of me. Also, I'm in Ohio. He's the only one with a Steelers jersey on. Um, uh, so so he's going on. So he's, he's used to on. adversity. He's used to adversity, yes. <laughs> His wife is telling him to sit down. Uh, her wife, girlfriend, the, the significant other is trying to tell him to get down. And uh, halfway through the match, he just goes, because the guy, the, he's going on, uh, Eric Fallen, I think was the other guy's name. Um, I think I posted the video where he comes out with a sparkler in his mouth. Um, but anyways, halfway through the match, this guy just says, I don't, I can't even support him. He's being a bitch. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and then comes back around and loves the song. Uh, so I got to watch like a roller coaster of emotions in front of me. And so, oh, I, I, we always, I feel like I always sit by the right group of people at wrestling shows lately um, that they're just going to crack me up the entire show. So uh, that was fun. And again, uh, shout out a great, great crew up there at uh, Neo pro. I just went as a fan, just checking out, see what their network partners are doing up there. And uh, it's a lot of fun. They do a lot of uh, really good show. And uh, I think they got a, I think they have, who's on the next show. Tommy dreamer is on their next show actually. Uh, Uh, So stay tuned for that. So, um and check out neo pro wrestling on their facebook social media for more information on that i think that's coming up in sep- late september if i'm not mistaken so um dave i don't know if this is what dave learned but it says it's a team it's a shame that we missed a team of Big E and drew mcintyre that would have been a big ed i don't get it anyways <laughs> moving on Pretty boy smooth. Thank you so much for joining us. Defending your, I'm not going to do the longest. Too late. Uh, NWA <laughs> Midwest, NWA Midwest Championship. Championship. I'm just yeah. sticking with that for now. I'll write out the full thing in the in the in the uh, description. Trust me. Um, but you got this Saturday, 6:05 p.m. NWA's YouTube account. You can watch it live, free. I think, yeah, free. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard anything else. So, uh, as long as you got Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, as long as you got the Wi-Fi, you got the Starlink, you have to pay for the internet, the but otherwise it's yes, free. Yes, exactly. So, Unless um, you watch it at McDonald's. What? Unless you watch it, if you watch I NWA love, Power at McDonald's. Send us pictures of your McDonald's Wi-Fi watch party for the show this Saturday. There you and go. Don't forget NWA Power on the CW app on mm-hmm. Tuesdays. Absolutely. Every Tuesday. Um, and uh, where can people go find more about Pretty Boy Smooth and that merch? The way we've marketed me, Gutters has done an amazing job. If you just Google Pretty Boy Smooth, you will find me. Here it all I is. not hard to find. Uh, follow me on social media. Just type in Pretty Boy Smooth. You'll see me with this beautiful belt. Um, please support. Get some merch. Uh, catch me at an upcoming event. Support NWA. And that's all I got. <laughs> Your picture comes up on DuckDuckGo when I search for you. On what? On DuckDuckGo. I don't even know what that is, but shout out to them. <laughs> it's a search engine. There's Google it's, and there's DuckDuckGo. Oh, I only know about Google and Ask Jeeves. <laughs> Ask Jeeves? Yo, what are you, is listen, that still a thing? Listen, shout out to my mom. This is why I'm very intelligent and know how to research things. When I was a kid, I would ask her questions, like dumbass kid shit. And she would literally tell me Ask Jeeves every time. 
And I had no idea what it was, so I typed it in. So pretty much what she was doing was teaching me how to go find the information as opposed to just like asking like random people. You know how like people go on Twitter like, hey, how do I start my car engine, whatever. And it's like, just YouTube or Google. You don't need to ask like 50 strangers. You know what I mean? Like, Is it kind of like that, uh, uh, let me Google that for you kind of y- thing? Yeah, it's like you'll get the same answer. You know what I love when a people message me something that they could, they message me on Facebook something they could have Googled. Yeah. That, and I that. just send them the Google results. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and I won't, I'm not perfect. I'm sure I've done this before. But at this point in my life, no, I can just know. Do the research. It's okay. I've had times in my life I could be a half-assed computer administrator just by using Google. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of information there. You're, you're right. able to lot of stuff, man. If you really are on a thing and you want to look like the expert, mm-hmm. <laughs> it helps. The it internet helps. is for more than just social media. Mm-hmm. People forget that all the time. That's where we spend most of our time on. So, um. Thank you so much. Hey, it's always good seeing you. Uh, always good seeing you at the shows. And like I said, it, it, and seriously, it's good seeing you kind of grow with things and, and everything. It's It's been really awesome Thank to kind of follow your journey that. here over the years. So one of the good ones, Pretty Boy Smooth. And uh, check him out this Saturday. And Bradley will be the, Bradley. at a wrestling Bradley show. Bradley will be at a wrestling show near you. Probably. I will be going to 880 this Friday. There you go. <laughs> What's your tour? I will be in the crowd at 880. I'll, I'll be, <laughs> that's for Bradley's the crowd tour going forever. Retribution um, of the Steel City Killers. I'll be also live on the uh, Indie yeah, Wrestling. I just, I just got to see. I have a picture with myself with the Steel, the Steel City Stompers. The what? what? The Steel City Stompers. They, um, Dash Bennett and uh, Don Murphy came out with, of all people, Ronnie Starks. At uh, Stomp Out Cancer, or as Hank Hudson would kept calling it, Stomp Out Cancer. Well, you know, Hank in that accent. Hank, yeah. yeah. But uh, they came, and then the St- they Steel City Stompers came out, and they beat Dash and uh, Don. Mm-hmm. And I've, I was honored to get a picture with, t- it's just two sentient shoes. Just two guys in uh, shoe outfits. I saw those pictures. I didn't know what was happening. Okay. It was it was two. They were the stompers. Two, oh, I get those it. Those were the Steel oh. City stompers, lefty and righty. I forgot the days where we took things so literally in wrestling. Uh, so, so um, I, I was, it was an honor to meet them. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, the 880 um, and uh, VCW mm-hmm. uh, isn't that uh, Saturday Night Special? Two guys who I hate, 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 hate. Mm-hmm. Against it's so weird. I don't like those guys, but I love Applebee's. Yeah. Against the Wayward Sons for the titles, and I believe that is TLC. Fans bring the weapons. I thought that was TLC. Am I mistaken? Oh, you're you're right. There's fans I bring the weapons. Is, there, is there's a, a six is, man that's yeah with the troublemakers the and um, uh, Felix. Uh, the mime. Yeah, I can and... bring something to hit Glenn Spector with. There you go. There you go. I would be very happy to bring something to have somebody hit Glenn Spector. They, they can hit Tyler Brooks and they can hit Kane and Christopher. That's all good. Maybe give uh, Lexus a good swamp on the head would be fine. But 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 Glenn specifically, I would like to bring someone. To, Are you going to like put Glenn's name on the weapon? Like I will now. The, yeah, just like there's like only for Glenn. Mm hmm. How do you how do you how do you signify receiving and not that he uses it? I <laughs> that's their you got two weeks that, to figure that, it out. You got two weeks to figure it out. I can't I can't there you, go. Uh, you know I can't put a password on a weapon and, and give it to the to Zeke Mercer. I well, from I Bradley to Glenn's head. Yeah, something like that. There you go. Very Maybe good. Learn something here, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody that's joining us in live in the chat room or afterwards on the podcast or one of the video streams all over the place. Please give a like, follow, and everything to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And if you like what's going on here, want to support the show, become part of it. Sometimes you could even be Bradley. patreoncom slash Show for all the perks. Thank you, guys. Everybody, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.